So now I'm going to tie this in to the mid-engine slash shock load part of the chassis and still using two inch chromoly, but this is a 120 wall thickness because I want this to be the strongest part of the vehicle. So I'm basically just adding all the tubes that will capture the shock mounts and take the loads. And then I'm following load paths so that I can see where I need to add gussets and where one tube will do the job because I don't want this to be overly complicated. It still needs to be stylized and designed, but it doesn't need to be crazy. This is another motif that I liked from the previous design, which is I added a tube around the outside of the shocks so that in the case of a rollover, there's at least some protection around the shocks because they'll just buckle with a side load and it sort of protects everything in there and still leaves room for the tire and it looks awesome. So here's another example where I had a weird coping on the SolidWorks weldment feature. You basically just have to chase your own tail until you get the sequence of tubes right. And it still wasn't perfect in SolidWorks. I had to chop off a portion that SolidWorks decided to add in that I didn't want. But I usually separate the portions of the chassis into different features. So the rear section is separate from the front section, is separate from the center section. And the reason for that is every time I add or modify a portion of the 3D sketch, I don't have to rebuild the entire chassis from scratch. I'm just able to modify that one portion of the model without breaking everything else. So the next thing I need to start thinking about is the cabin. And the primary constraint on this part of the cabin is the front where the wheel is at full lock and full compression and needs to not crash into the cage. So I actually found a little interference on my lower control arm that I needed to take a big bite out of. I'm making sure that there's enough room for the driver's feet at full lock and full compression, and there's enough room for the cage so that it's not going to rub on the tire. It's very seldom that you would have your vehicle at full lock and full compression, but in terms of the design, it still needs to cycle properly. Most of the time when you're landing and your front wheels are at full compression on a jump, you're not going to have your steering locked. You're just going to snap the wheel off. And most of the time when you're at full lock steering, you're going to be going really slow and your front suspension is not going to be fully compressed. But again, it's just a best practice for this design. So I'm just adding the side rails for the tub for the chassis. And these are really simple. I'm just following the profile of that bottom part of the frame, tying into that front bulkhead, adding an arc to clear the tire, and then some vertical down tubes to land on the base of the chassis. 